Congress has been busy lately, trying to find enough money to extend the debt ceiling, pay for an infrastructure bill, and forgive student debt. Now, many Americans think we can't do all that because people don't pay their fair share of taxes, but I disagree. In fact, I think we could solve all of America's problems if the IRS stopped investigating the people we've been chasing down to pay their taxes and let them cheat. Don't know what I mean? Let me explain in a segment called, How Did We Get Here? Congress is struggling right now to pass a much needed infrastructure bill, but Republicans are claiming that America doesn't have trillions of dollars to spend on frivolous stuff like infrastructure, childcare, and student loan forgiveness. But you know America be lying. <laughs> America is that friend who's balling in the VIP section of the club, but when you ask her about the $50 she owes you, America gets all loud and asks you why you're bothering her about an old funky little $50. But, <laughs> Instead of bottle service, America is buying dick-shaped spaceships that don't even go to space. And instead of $50, you're wondering when you can get some student debt relief. Well, I'm gonna sit here tonight and figure all of these problems out because who knows more about struggling to pay bills and being in debt than someone who spent 15 years doing improv? <laughs> Zip, zap, broke. <laughs> yes, and I'm overdrawn. Can I get a suggestion? Oh, I can't afford one? Great. Now, last month, the Treasury Department released a study saying the tax gap, the difference between the taxes owed and the amount collected, is about $600 billion a year, or one pair of Yeezys. Now, that's a lot of money owed to the U.S. government, and the IRS is very serious about finding the people who owe it. But they're not looking where you think they are. According to a report by ProPublica, the IRS spends a disproportionate amount of their time and resources chasing down the people who make the least money. That's right. They go to the poorest counties and look at people who claim the Earned Income Tax Credit. That's a tax credit that was created to refund tax money to the working poor. In fact, if you claim the earned income tax credit, you're more likely to face IRS scrutiny than someone making 20 times as much, which is crazy. That's like Batman deciding to let the Joker go so he can focus on some guy fishing without a license. <laughs> so the IRS uses a disproportionate amount of resources to collect the smallest number of tax dollars from the poorest people. But they aren't just looking for poor people, like a cop at a speed trap. They're also on the lookout for people of color, like a cop at a speed trap. <laughs> According to a recent investigation by The Root, people who live in disproportionately non-white counties are audited at higher rates. In fact, the IRS seems to specifically audit places where rich people aren't, like rural Mississippi or any coffee shop that doesn't have oat milk. Now, here's a map of where America audits at high rates, okay? And here's the distribution of non-white people in America. These two maps could look more similar if they were named Mary, Kate, and Ashley. <laughs> so is poor people cheating on their taxes the reason the US government is broke? No, but also if you think about it, no. First of all, the IRS themselves have said that when they catch people who misused the earned income tax credit, those people usually cheated by mistake because the law is so complicated, which is ridiculous. Paying taxes shouldn't be more confusing than building an Ikea dresser, because in this case, when you end up with three screws left over, you could go to jail. <laughs> Second of all, the majority of the money owed to the IRS is owed by rich people who simply refuse to pay their taxes. Now, I'm not talking about tax breaks and loopholes. I'm talking about the tax equivalent of sitting down at a restaurant, ordering a steak, and when the bill comes, saying, pass. On top of that, the top 10% of income earners who cheat on their taxes or refuse to pay will cost the U.S. about $5 trillion over the next 10 years. That's a trillion with an R. That's right. I prefer to go by the second letter. The rich owe the IRS over 20 times more than poor people do, but the Treasury Department says it's easier to audit poor people. They are literally overlooking bank robbers to catch a customer who accidentally took the teller's pen. So let's go back to where we started. I said I was gonna find us enough money to pay for infrastructure, childcare, and student debt. Well, the price tag for the original infrastructure bill was estimated at $3.5 trillion over 10 years. And the Brookings Institute said forgiving $50,000 in student debt for every borrower in the whole country would cost $1 trillion. And 
The American Families Plan that offers child care for working families would cost an estimated $225 billion. Now, if you add that up, carry the one, a bag, a gaga, goo goo, that's about $4.7 trillion, which means if we collect unpaid taxes from the wealthiest 10%, we can do everything on that list and have about $300 billion left over for margaritas. We did it, guys! Woo! We did it! We figured out how to solve all of America's problems. I swear, I must be some kind of genius. Either that or the IRS, Congress, and the Treasury Department are overlooking wealthy white people and systematically burdening poor and non-white people with an unequal share of America's fiscal and financial responsibilities. No. America couldn't possibly be that racist. I'm probably just a genius, but at least we know how we got here.